Welcome back. I'm going to be uh, starting up on the uh, AC input from the grid, uh, tying that into this now. Uh, just waiting for this uh, blizzard they've been talking about for the last week. Uh, the stores have been all crammed with people and everything. They've been talking about this. Finally hit. Here it is. The big blizzard. Oh, there it is. The big blizzard. It's supposed to be changing over into rain in about oh, 30, 30 minutes. Biggest snowstorm yet this year. Glad they uh, told us a week ahead of time this was coming. Nothing like long lines at the store. I guess I better get up my snow shovels. I don't know if I, I can dig that much off. Be a lot of work. So we are back to hook in the AC. And uh, I'm going to try to do horizontal shots from here on out. I absolutely hate uh, doing them like that. Because it looks bad in the video. The only problem is it's harder to see everything in this version. And I've got it zoomed out as much as I can. So I'm going to be running some wire. There's the wire culprit. Actually, it was only $500. <laughs> only. Uh, but... That thing's got some weight to it, but I'm going to run that through this uh, uh, basement area, and uh, I've got to lay it all out first because I got to snake it through some areas, put it all on the ground first, and then start rising it up and and working from there. But uh, I've got all the attachments and stuff. Well, I want to hook it in and go from there. Wow, this thing's got some weight to it. <laughs> oh my. This is my sub panel. It comes off the main breaker and is fed by, I believe, a 90 watt, a 90 amp. Yes, 90 amps. And uh, from there is where I'm going to draw my AC. This is clear on the other side of the house. That's where the 80 feet come into play. I also want to hook it into my well. And uh, I'll probably tie in there somewhere since it's so close. So it can run my well. But uh, this is uh, the end place that I'm going to take it all the way to the other side. This thing is so wound up. I'm having to unspool it by rolling it on the ground. Oh, it wants to keep rolled up like a snake. I'm trying to get it unrolled. But uh, get it up over this thing. And down, down the ways. Well, I finally got this uh, six three gauge in here. Uh, but man, it was like a wild animal in my basement. It went wherever it wanted to go. It got stuck under the refrigerator. I couldn't get it out. It knocked over so many things trying to straighten the curve out of this thing and get it up to follow uh, follow everything. Oh my God. I recorded some of it, but uh, <clears throat> my language was not pro appropriate. So I probably won't be putting that here. But uh, I got it in. There, got the bad boy in. Broke a few things, but <laughs> I got it in. And around, and we're there. I made sure I left about three feet. Okay, that may be more than three feet. <laughs> well, I figured it's about 80 feet. I kind of overshot 80 probably by the time I did it. But that's a 125 foot wire cord. And I am not cutting that $500 wire in half or a quarter of it off the end. It will remain in one solid piece. Eventually, I will move this unit to my retirement home. and uh, So it's not going to stay here forever. And I'm not spending 500 bucks again. Hence why it's still rolled up. <laughs> Alright, this is uh, one of the cutters I received with a... Uh, I had bought a uh, big uh, hydraulic press to uh, crimp my uh, battery terminals. It's actually, I guess, one of the smaller ones. The hydraulic crimper came with this. 
but I broke the hydraulic crimper the first time I tried to put it on a double aught wire, which is what I use for my batteries. It just totally broke, snapped in half. So I'm suspecting this wire cutter wasn't any good. I returned it, got my monies back, and ended up getting a, uh, oh gosh, I don't know if it was a 12 or 18 ton press that seems to be working a lot better. But anyway, I want to see if this thing will actually cut this 6 by 3 and be any good or whether it's really a piece of junk like the other hydraulic press was. <laughs> uh, yeah, that ain't that ain't going nowhere. It ain't even remotely. It's, I guess it's like the hydraulic press. Now it worked really good on a six gauge and it'll probably work good on the, I mean eight gauge it worked really good and it'll probably work okay on the six gauge inside that wire. But all three or four of them at one time, not gonna happen. I, I probably should have known that. <laughs> Forbidden, huh? Wow, well, I tell you, these things are getting more and more stricter. Wonder what will happen. I tried to do that. All right, I've got the power shut off on this unit. I'm going to commence to uh, attaching this uh, 63 cable to it, finishing it all up, and tying it in. So I'll get to that now. Oh, got my line in, running through there. Came back out, I overkilled a little bit here. Uh, but I'll trim this up. And I ended up, I guess I didn't realize where I came in with the load was directly above it. There's no room if I put a generator, which I'll tie into, there's no room for the generator too. So I'm gonna have to come through here and then go back over. I guess looking back on it, it'd been better to bring in the load to here and then had this as the uh, DC or the grid have this as a grid and then that is your generator that's for your PV so wasn't taking that out quite so much still got one more for uh, communications there well it looks like that's about the only way I'm going to get to cut that so we'll give her a shot here I can't do that and hold the camera too. So you'll just have to see the after effects. I'd say that was pretty easy. <laughs> so that's what you could use. They cut it pretty quick and fast. Now I had complained about this tool earlier because it's a forbidden tool. <laughs> but it'll actually do a good job of cutting these wires once I strip them out. And it'll be a nice clean cut. As long as I don't, as long as it's not forbidden. All right, we got the big boy wires coming in now. I trim it up, try to fit it in there. I don't have any uh, crimpers to put on this. It's, they're too big, so uh, hopefully it fits in there nicely. So, uh, and we'll go from there. Like I said, that uh, wire cutter does a good job on these smaller wires. A nice clean round cut. I like to use this mirror so I can see stuff a little bit better. Uh, mainly here I'm trying to make sure that's all the way open before I try to put this wire in there. But these little mirrors are really handy for seeing stuff. She fit in there nicely. That's a six gauge, by the way. I understood it could take six gauge, and it does. Well, it fit in there, even without all that. Uh, I really do like the open space here. Gives you lots of room to do stuff. I still got room to put in my generator now. I can run the wires maybe over there or something. I think that's pretty congested. Make sure it's off the batteries in the back there, but looks like it's hooked up on this end. All right. Now, go hook up the other end. 
Well, I've got some complications here. Uh, I was hoping to put the 50 amp breaker right here, but that stud right there, the the uh, uh, neutral thing, sticks out so much. Uh, it's just not going to work. This thing is hitting that stud. And I think all of these are going to hit that stud. So, what's the purpose of these bottom two things? They're useless. That's a bit irritating. I'm going to try to move this top one down here, maybe in the last one. And then move this one over to up there. Hopefully I got enough wire so that I can get two spaces over here and be able to put it in here. Otherwise, uh... It's not going to work. I'm not going to even have space on this panel. So let's see if I can move these. Let's get to work. Oh my God, did I get squirrely. <laughs> I actually managed to lower this top one down to the, the bottom here. And move the one from the side there to the other side. I never even had to unplug them. I just moved them. Because I left enough space up here. You can see it's a little tighter on that top one. But I got my 50 amp in there. I guess I got this bad boy maxed out. Because you can't get nothing there because of that stud. Ridiculous. Bad positioning. You could have just drawn it down a little bit further. But anyway. Wow, I got it to work. Well, let's hook this wire in. <laughs> I uh, wanted to cut this out here. I don't have a lot of light to start. But I always have problems cutting the wrong size out. I just want this center one out. And I always end up messing up these other rings. Sorry, the light's a little iffy here. And popping it out. It happened on the last panel I did. Uh, I, I'm sure electricians have some way of doing that without messing up the other rings. But uh, I definitely did that on the other one. Fortunately, I can use this one and take the whole thing out. I'm only using a three-quarter inch. Uh, which is just the right size for it. So I don't have to worry about messing that one up. I think that's the one I'm going to go with. Whoever the electrician was that put this in did a horrible job. Oh, wait a minute. That was me. Uh, never mind. Well, if you remember... I uh, kept this all wound up and in the process of trying to uh, shorten this string here a little bit uh, the wild animal and the wire came alive again and this whole piece tried to come off and fall on top of my head and rip this out and so I was I've been battling the the wild wire I got it secured up again it ain't gonna do that again on me with a bigger clamp there as well as uh, bungee ties everywhere onto the screwed into the wall. So I ain't going to do nothing now. And uh, I can get back to hooking this in. Alright, got her all hooked in there. It fit in there nicely. I can't believe I squirreled out so much. and was able to rearrange this without doing anything but moving the breakers. <laughs> uh, I'm a little disappointed that that it will never be a breaker that's it but i at least got that one below it on it got the 50 amps there about to fire this thing back up see how many sparks fly and how quick i can run away from this when it lights up but anyway uh i'm gonna energize it 